Welcome, I'm Rob Froney, and I'm here to talk about op-amp summing point constraint. So, before we get into the constraint, we need to understand what an op-amp is. And an op-amp is actually uh, just an ideal voltage amplifier. If you look at here, uh, in the uh, light green, we have a, an amplifier model. A circuit model for a voltage amplifier has an input, uh, VI, and it has an output, VO, and uh, we'd like to, uh, to pick the input resistance and the output resistance to be uh, as close as possible to um, the ideal. So, let's look first at the input. We'd like to make the input voltage, VI, as big as possible. The VS and the RS represent the circuit that someone would hook up to this amplifier. We don't really have uh, control of that if we're the ones designing the amplifier. And, uh, you know, the VS and RS is just equivalent, the Thevenin equivalent of whatever circuit they hook up there. Um, what we'd really like is the voltage VI to be as close to VS as possible. And since we uh, can't control RS, the best way to do that is to make RI infinite. If we make RI infinite, there's no current through RS, and then VS and VI are the same. So we're going to say here that the best thing to do is to make RI infinity. Now, uh, for the output circuit, let's think about what we should do to R RO. Well, first of all, we'd like to make V out as big as possible. So we don't want any IR drop across RO, so if we make RO zero, the current going through RO won't cause any uh, IR drop. And V out will equal AVI. So let's make R out zero. That would make an ideal voltage amplifier. And that's essentially what an op amp is. Here's a, uh, a picture of an op amp. We have two inputs. There's the positive input and the inverting input. V plus and V minus are the voltages at those two places. And um, the gain is A times the difference between the voltage V plus and the voltage V minus. And in an op amp, the gain is generally very large. Um, you know, might be 10 to the 8th. But generally, we don't know the exact gain. But... Uh, it's just uh, just enormous. So if you notice, there's no current that goes into the VI terminal and uh, V plus terminal, and no no uh, current that goes in the V minus terminal because the input resistance is is infinity, and um, the output resistance, as you can see, is zero here. It's just a wire going through the out output. You can see up here our out was made to zero here, so there's just this wire that's uh, put right in here. Okay, so now let's let's look at this thing in a block diagram. So if you notice here, in black, we have the model of the op amp. That's the black part right up here. And, and that model basically uh, is the same as the, uh, the equation up here that said the output voltage, which is essentially this voltage right here, the output voltage, the voltage right there, is equal to A times V plus minus V minus. And if you notice here, this output voltage right over here, V out, is equal to A times VI, but VI is V plus minus V minus. Notice the plus and the minus here that denote uh, whether you're subtracting or adding the uh, quantities going into the summer. <coughs> now, if we just had just the black part, the problem is V out would tend toward infinity because essentially if you put in anything that was, uh, or V plus was any different at all from V minus, you would get V out heading toward infinity, which isn't quite what we usually want. What we usually want is a uh, reasonable A, say 10. We'd like a gain of about 10 for our amplifier. 
Uh, although, you know, sometimes people use a hundred, but it's certainly not an infinity, and you might even go down as, uh, you know, as low as one, but, uh, but you want to make sure that the, the gain is usually bigger than one, because you want to magnify the, uh, the difference between V plus and V minus. And um, if you didn't want to magnify it, if you just wanted to reduce it, you could use simple resistors to do that. You wouldn't need an op amp. So, um, you know, it's going to be something between one and infinity. And usually it's something reasonable, you know, between one and a hundred or something like that. So, how are we going to do that? Well, if you notice here, in orange, I have drawn what's known as negative feedback. What we do is we sample the output voltage right here, and we multiply that by a number beta, and that beta is going to be less than one. Uh, basically, what we're going to use is some resistors to, uh, to get a replica of the output only in miniature, much smaller than, um, than V out. And we're going to use that to adjust the inverting amplifier or inverting uh, terminal voltage of the of the op amp. We're going to put that into the negative part of the op amp into into this terminal right here. So <clears throat> let's just kind of try and understand how this works from a block diagram perspective. So if I do that, V out is certainly equal to A times VI. That's even without the uh, orange uh, a feedback and vi was equal to v plus plus v uh, minus v minus which i wrote wrote in black too because that's that's just a function of the black part of the circuit now what happens is we can uh, kind of erase this vi you already know vi is v plus minus v minus so v minus is now equal to beta times v out that's what the orange part of the diagram did so just substituting that in for V minus, right up here, uh, we get V out equals A times the quantity V plus, which was just copied from above. And uh, then we're going to subtract out beta V out, because V minus was beta V out. So that's really just A times V plus minus V minus again. But now we're getting it in terms of V out. We got rid of V minus in our equation. And if you notice, V plus is the input to this whole circuit right here, this whole block diagram. So really, in this equation right here, we have only the output and the input in this equation. And that means we could just use algebra to solve for the output in terms of the input. So if you uh, take and, uh, and move the A times minus beta V out over to the left, it becomes uh, A plus beta times A times V out. And then if you factor out the V out, you get V out times 1 plus beta A. And what's left on the right is just A times V plus. Then uh, you can divide both sides by 1 plus beta A, and you end up with this uh, equation that tells you what the output voltage is going to be right here. It's A over 1 plus beta A. And if we wish, we could um, solve for the, the transfer function or the gain of this circuit after feedback. I'm calling that A sub F. And that would be V out over V plus, which is A over 1 plus beta A. That's just dividing both sides of the uh, highlighted equation by V plus. Now, remember I said that A was very large. So let's take the limit as A goes to infinity. If A goes to infinity, in, in this uh, expression for A sub F, you see it, it turns into just 1 over beta because... If A is very large, when you add beta A, 1 to beta A, you get uh, essentially beta A. So it's A over beta A, and the A's cancel, giving you 1 over beta. And that's what we have over here. The limit as A goes to infinity of A sub F is 1 over beta. The nice thing about that is beta will be made out of uh, a resistor network. Because resistor networks, when you put a voltage into them, they give you a voltage that is um, either that size or lower coming out. Resistors are also the most linear components we have to work with in electronics. 
and you can buy very precise resistors for uh, a very uh, reasonable uh, price. So uh, we can make now, if you notice, uh, an amplifier that depends, the gain depends only on the values of some resistors. And, and that's really uh, incredibly useful. We'll look at that in a minute. Now let's look at uh, um, the uh, input voltage, VI, right here. Notice that V out was equal to AVI. That means if we divide both sides by A, we get VI equals V out over A. So that's what I've done right here. VI equals V out over A. And V out was A over 1 plus beta A times V plus from this equation right here. And so plugging that all together, notice that the A's cancel and you get 1 over 1 plus beta A times V plus. And now if you remember, A was a very large number. So basically if we take the limit as A goes to infinity of this, we end up with VI equals zero. Now if VI equals zero, remember VI equaled V plus minus V minus. Right here, you can see it right here. There's VI and it's equal to this V plus minus that V minus, and the minus is right here. So if I uh, do that, that says that this is equal to V plus minus V minus, which implies that V plus equals V minus. And that's the summing point constraint right there. This thing, that's the summing point constraint. So uh, I'm glad you uh, took time to listen to this video. Uh, if you liked it, you can come back and I'll give you a little bit more amp uh, uh, idea how you can actually use this summing point constraint in, in another video.